David, you're a zoologist. Yes, I am. Can I get you to tell me what it is that you actually do research on and why you chose that particular field? Well, um, I was very interested in how animals communicated and I got particularly interested in how they communicated using sound. What I wanted to know was um, what sort of things they were transferring, what sort of information was being transferred between them uh, and how it was encoded. And uh, particular interest was the fact that many animals, well, a lot of animals, are able to communicate outside our range of hearing. So there's this very noisy world around us and we're not conscious of it. So you're trying to listen for a sound we can't hear? That's right, yes. And I have to use special instruments to do that. I use things that will bring the sound down into our own range of hearing. Um, and I, it is fascinating that there's this very noisy area that we just can't hear. Is there, is there a particular animal that, that you're working on? Yes, in the past I have worked uh, uh, on whales and on um, rodents, but now I work on um, insects, and in fact on just one particular insect. You do find in this country, it's probably um, easy enough in the summer to find it round here. Um, but it's very inconspicuous, it's small, but it uses um, sound that's way beyond our range of hearing. Are you going to tell me what it's called? <laughs> and it's called the speckled bush cricket. So what do you think the speckled bush crickets are trying to say to each other? Do you think you've actually worked out what they're saying? The, um, the sound is very, very short, so it can't contain much information. And it, essentially it says, uh, I'm, I'm sexually active and I'm here. OK, so I'm a female, I'm over here, come and get me. <laughs> yes, that's right. Yes. So how have you found that out then? Um, firstly, by um, watching and listening and, and using equipment to pick up the sounds, but then um, taking over part of the conversation. So replacing the male with an artificial male that produces the same calls to see if you can get the female to respond. And, and you can. And you can do it the other way around, take over the female role. And so by doing that, you can work out how they are communicating. So what did you do? Create some kind of electronic bug? Uh, yes, essentially. Just a little loudspeaker that produced the sound. And uh, you can produce the sound and get the um, appropriate responses from the real animal. I mean, you said bush crickets, they're, they're very small. I mean, they, they must mm. seem almost, forgive me, like an insignificant <laughs> part of the bigger nature picture, but mm. presumably they have a role to play. Uh, yes, they do. They're, they're obviously part of um, the ecosystem um, that they, they're living in. Quite a lot of eggs are laid, in the hundreds, um, and that hatch. And the young, of course, do provide food for predators, so they're part of a food chain. Um, in other parts of the world, say in the tropics, there are much bigger bush crickets that uh, will, of course, feed on crops uh, and actually provide a food source in some cases. You mentioned ecosystems. Mm -hmm. Now, you're the lead educator on one of these massive open online courses, or MOOCs mm -hmm. as they're called, and the one that you've done is on ecosystems. Can you tell me about your role as lead educator and, and what it was like to write the course? Well, uh, as lead educator, um, I did assemble the course uh, and then I um, I take it through each of its presentations uh, together with some uh, facilitators who help. And I really enjoyed making it. I didn't have much time to do it. Um, so I made use of all the experience that I've got and um, resources that are readily available. And I wanted to tell uh, um, stories about ecosystems in perhaps two different ways. One going from something really small and confined like a rock pool and going up to um, you know, the seas around the Antarctic continent, uh, but also going from UK examples um, to worldwide examples, ending up with the World Heritage Site that is Galapagos. Which you've been to, of which course. I, which I've been to a couple of times, yes. So how is it different then, creating teaching materials for a MOOC than, than from you know, a module or a course? Well, it's entirely designed for leisure learning. Um, uh, at your own pace, and uh, although there is some assessment, it's, it's not compulsory. Uh, and it's for 
anybody with any interest at all in the subject area. And it's also very um, rich in uh, images and video, so it's a, it's a very attractive looking course uh, and it's a great pleasure to um, uh, write it and uh, then present it. So for somebody who's, you know, got their own back garden yeah. and is interested in what's in it, would you recommend the Ecosystems course? I certainly would, yes. Um, it contains some opportunities to go out and look at your ecosystems in your own area. And of course it's available worldwide and there are people from um, all over the world who study and it's fascinating to get their um, experiences of what their own um, habitats and ecosystems are like in their area. David, thank you.